Hi everyone, in today's video I want to share with you my most often used tip to improve a photo reference to paint from. Cropping. It seems obvious, but I literally crop almost every client photo sent to me for portraits. I'm going to show you how the smallest and most simple adjustment can take a mediocre photograph and create a fantastic painting and composition. If you enjoy this here, I have tons of other videos all about different aspects of painting and drawing as well as the medium of soft pastel. So please check out my other playlists and also remember to subscribe. I also have a Patreon channel where you will gain access to my full catalogue of tutorials and lots more help and support. I'll add links to this in the description below, but I hope that you enjoy this. All artists should acknowledge the importance of good composition. But if you work from photography, then sometimes you're limited by the photographer. This is why I love to take my own photos to work from, because it means that I'm in control of the composition from the start. However, I also love to take on commissions, and it's not always possible to meet my clients when they're dotted all over the globe. I'll often work with my client and guide them in taking a better photograph for me to work from, but it's not always even possible to do that. If a client just can't produce a high enough quality of photograph for me to work from, then I won't take on the job. But a lot of the time, I'm able to see some potential in photographs that don't initially look like they would make a great painting. And the first thing that I nearly always play around with is cropping. Now, I use Photoshop on my laptop for pretty much everything, but the beauty of cropping is that you can do this on almost any free software. Even the basic software that comes on your phones these days can do a simple crop. So you don't even need to spend much money to be able to crop your images these days. And it is the number one way that I improve on the photo references that I'm given. So I'm going to show you a variety of different images where I've cropped and talk you through that process of searching for the best composition. So the first piece I want to talk about is this pet portrait that I produced. Uh, this is the photo reference on the left that my client sent me and this is the painting that I came up with. And I just want to quickly talk through how I decided on this crop. So the first thing when I looked at the photo reference is obviously that there are a lot of lovely elements about it that I wanted to include. Um, the first thing that I noticed though is that we can see the horizon line is a little bit wonky. We're a bit off with the horizon line. So the first thing I would do here is to free transform the image, meaning you can just take it and uh, rotate it around like this and just straighten up the horizon line. Now, if you want to be really particular about that, you could add yourself a, a guideline um, as long as it's horizontal at all. It doesn't really matter how far down it comes, but then you can drag this guideline somewhere that's going to help you. And then once you go to free transform, you can use that guideline just to make sure that you get it nice and horizontal. Then you can just drag that line out of the equation. So that was the first thing that I did just to straighten up the horizon line. Then I really wanted to include a little bit of this top um, part of the photo because I loved all of this greenery hanging down. And I also wanted to include the, the lovely water ripple that he's standing in and all of those lovely reflections in front of him. So that to me made the piece need to be a, a tall shape, so portrait shaped rather than the very wide landscape shape that the photograph is. Because to me, all of this down the left and all of this down the right is pretty dead space. And I wanted to bring our focus more onto the dog. So to play around with the crop uh, tool, which you'll find over here to the left on Photoshop, but as I've mentioned already, any free program will allow you to crop, so not just Photoshop. So I just give myself a rough um, portrait shaped crop here. And then you can actually drag the image within the cropped area, as you can see. 
And this is what I played around with really um, to see how far up I wanted to bring the dog. Um, I could have brought him further down the piece like this. And it's quite nice because you can use these sections within this crop tool so you can see it's split into thirds height wise and thirds um, width wise. And that's what's really helpful about the crop tool and being able to move it around like this. Um, what I had in mind was to use roughly the golden ratio, which is just over a third of the way up. And to use that line to place the water um, ripple area on. And that's what I played around with, just seeing how far across I wanted to put the dog. Um, how far to the right. He would have been quite nice further to the right as well, but it, I felt it worked much nicer having more of that lovely um, oval shape of the water that he's standing in, that lovely ripple. So that was how I decided on this crop. And you can see that's how I got to my finished painting here of this lovely water dog. So this one's actually quite similar with a lot of uh, water reflections and I actually took this photo reference on the left with a mind to create a lovely swan painting from it, which you can see my painting here on the right. And similar to the other one, I wanted to include lots of those really beautiful reflections in the water. And although I liked the composition of this photograph when I took it, what I actually wanted when it came to painting it was to bring more of our focus onto the swan and I really wanted it to be all about the watery world. So I decided in this case to completely cut out the top part of the painting and just crop it underneath the tree line there. And that's really what I played about with, with this piece. Just seeing how I could focus more on the swan and make it all about that lovely water and all of the reflections. I like the fact that when I cropped the top part of the image out, you still knew that there were trees above this just from those lovely long strips of reflection. So that was my thinking for this one. And I also put the swan more central than in the previous one where I used more of the golden ratio um, so it's not quite central, but after playing around with it, I really liked how it looked just below the center line here. So I really just take my images and play around with the cropping process to find what I think is the most pleasing composition. So on to another pet portrait, because quite honestly, when clients send me their photographs, that's usually when I've got a little bit of work to do on the composition. And that was certainly the case with lovely Archie the Dachshund here. I loved this photo reference. But again, a bit like with the first one that I showed you, I felt like the left area and the right area of the photograph were pretty much dead space with not much to tell of the story. And I wanted to bring more of our attention into Archie. Now, one format that I really favour in my portraits and all of my paintings in general is a square format. I love to create square paintings. And as soon as I saw this photograph, I thought that it would probably crop into a lovely square shape. Now, just as before, you can take the crop tool and quite simply um, create a rough um, square shape like this. Um, and then just uh, you can look at the dimensions of it here and get uh, a rough square shape. So that's close enough for now. And then just like before, you can move the image around on it like this until you're happy with it. And in this case, I was really trying to make the dog quite central. Um, but include some of the lovely surroundings as well. So that was why I chose quite a close crop, but still allowing lots of the background elements to be included. Now, there is another way that you can um, create a crop if you know the format of the painting that you'd like to create. So, for example, you know that you want to create a square. So what I often do as well is open up a new file and create the file to be the size of the painting. So in this case, I was thinking around 16 inches by 16 inches. 
So that's what I did, opened up a new file for that. Then I can just copy and paste the whole image into my new file. Now when I go to free transform, I can resize the image into the square shape. So it's sort of the opposite of a crop. I'm resizing my photograph to fit the new square shape that I've created. I like this one as well. Um, I use both methods, but they're, they're both pretty much doing a crop. But if I already know the shape or the rough dimensions of the painting I would like, or for example, sometimes my client knows the size and shape of the painting they would like, then that would be the method that I would use, create a new file to that shape. So another pet portrait example where the client sent me a really beautiful photograph. I really liked this photograph just as it was, but their uh, needs were different than this. They wanted to gift this as a small gift to a friend. And really you're looking at a much bigger budget for me to paint a full body dog with lots of background detail like this, that's gonna take me a lot longer. So in this case, I suggested the crop idea to them, which you can see I used in my finished painting here to the right. And I really love this one cropped actually because as good as the full image is, it really does add some drama I felt to the piece just to do a close crop of the face like this. So I really liked how this one turned out, even though the original photo actually was lovely just the way it was. I really liked the drama of just bringing us closer to the dog's face and framing it with those dramatic grey clouds behind. So sometimes it's not even because the image itself needs to be cropped to become a better painting, but sometimes you can help a client out by working to their budget and create a smaller, more intimate piece. Now here is the opposite problem because sometimes clients send me photographs which aren't the greatest quality. This client was looking a portrait of just the Weimaraner and they sent me a selection of photos and if you've ever had to paint a Weimaraner before you'll know that it's very difficult to capture their colour and daylight is usually best for that and all of the other shots were very dark indoors. This one was the only one really with any good daylight in it, but you can see it on its own does not make the best photograph. But when I started to play around with the cropping, and again I thought of this lovely square format that you can see in my painting here, and that's what I decided to try and do to find a nice crop that would include just the face on its own. Because when I also zoomed in on the photo reference, it really wasn't that clear. You're losing quite a lot of detail in the photo reference as well. So I thought a smaller piece, a smaller crop, where I can bring out a bit of detail in the dog and also make use of the lovely colors in the background. So that was my idea to um, improve upon a, a mediocre photograph with a lot of other things going on in the foreground and again, just focus in on the beautiful dog. So just lastly, I wanted to share this piece with you. Uh, you can see an older photo reference on the left here. This is actually my grandmother, and that's me as a tiny, tiny baby. But I didn't want to uh, paint the whole image. I just wanted to create a little study of my grandmother, uh, actually as a gift to my mum. And this is the finished painting to the right. So I looked through lots of old photos, which as you can imagine are all pretty grainy and none really showed her character as well as this one. So again, I thought I could make a good crop out of this and again, I've used my trusty square format for this. So my thinking with this one was to just include her head and shoulders. And sometimes when you're doing a portrait like this, if the person is looking off to one side, it's quite nice not to put them in the center or too far to this side, but to actually put them over on this side 
of the composition. So as if they're really looking off into this part of the painting and beyond. So again, it's useful having this crop tool split everything into thirds for you and you can just think about where to place that. In my other video here on YouTube, um, all about composition basics. This is where I go into more detail about uh, using the golden ratio, dividing your image into thirds. There are lots of ways that you can do this. In this video, I just wanted to give you some basic ideas on how to use the crop tool, which if you're using Photoshop, you'll find over here to the left in your tools. And then for this particular piece, I decided to remove the background, include my grandmother's favorite color, and she was very fond of lively patterns. So that's how I came up with the rest of that painting. But I hope you can see from all this just how vital that very simple crop tool is within all of my work. I hope that these examples give you some ideas on how you can use cropping to improve either yours or your clients photographs. A simple crop can make a huge difference. I have another video here on my YouTube channel all about composition basics which covers way more than just cropping alone as composition really is one of those key elements that can make or break your painting. You'll find the link to that video at the very end of this one. And if you've enjoyed this here, then please do subscribe. Or for even more tuition and support, check me out over on Patreon. This library on my website allows you to browse everything I have available. And it also lets my patrons locate what they're looking for. I hope I can help you more either here on YouTube or over on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, happy pastling.